Hello and welcome back to the course on classical electromagnetism. So we are still on the fourth chapter of this course which is on magnetostatics. So before we proceed with this lesson, let us review what we have discussed so far. So in the previous lesson, we discussed about the Biot-Savart law, which is used to calculate the magnetic field of a current distribution. There is a volume current, surface current, or line current distribution. Uh, we also discussed about current densities and how they are related to the total current I. And in the previous chapters, we have discussed about the divergence and curve of electrostatic fields. So we have found out that the divergence of an electrostatic field is actually related to the volume charge density. So this is the differential form of Gauss law. And that the electrostatic field has no curve. It only has a divergence. So for this lesson, we will be talking about the curl and divergence of magnetostatic fields. So one consequence of the divergence and curl of magneto magnetostatic fields is a law called Ampere's law. So Ampere's law is analogous to Gauss law in electrostatics. So the law of Biot-Savart, the Biot-Savart law, is the magnetic analog of Coulomb's law, and Ampere's law, which is a consequence of the curl of a magnetostatic field, is the magnetic analog of Gauss law. So. <clears throat> If you have a line, if you have a current, similar with the Gauss law, instead of enclosing your uh, charge with a Gaussian surface, you enclose your current with what we call an Amperian uh, loop. So in integral form, Ampere's law is just this one, B dot DL is equal to mu naught times the I current enclosed. I here is the current enclosed. Now the current enclosed depends if you have a surface current distribution, then it's integral of J dot the air, L, sorry, volume current, volume current distribution. Or if you have a surface current distribution, then I is integral of K dot uh, the L. So the differential form via Stokes uh, theorem, so in, in the divergence of an electrostatic field, we use the divergence theorem here. We use the Stokes theorem to obtain the differential form of uh, Ampere's law. And the differential form describes the curl of a magnetostatic field. So, this implies that the, a magnetostatic field actually curls around a volume current distribution in a similar manner as the divergence of an electric field uh, is, di uh, is divergent or spreading out from a current, sorry, from a charge distribution. So in, this, in a similar manner, a magnetic field curls around a current distribution, J, in general. <clears throat> so if we try to solve the divergence of the magnetic field, so in integral form, the divergence is actually B dot DA. And if this is our magnetic field, if we dot this with the area, uh, vector, you'll actually get zero. And in differential form, uh, this one, del dot B is called zero. So, <clears throat> in electrostatics, E dot DA is the electric flux. In magnetostatics, B dot DA is what we call the magnetic flux. Now, it's always zero since the magnetic field of a distribution is always from a dipole, a north pole and a south uh, pole. So the flux of a, of a dipole, a north and a south pole, will always be zero due to equal distribution of uh, north and south uh, poles. So unlike the electric flux, which can be uh, zero or non-zero, because you can find 
a single electric monopole or electric charge such as a positive or a negative charge for magnetostatics there are no single mon monopole n pole or a single s pole that is why the total electric flux is zero so therefore the magnetic field a magnetostatic field is not divergent there's no divergence so it only has a curl it curls around the current uh, element <clears throat> so that's the divergence and curl of a magnetostatic field the curl of a magnetostatic field is actually uh, the Ampere's law so in a similar manner with Gauss law we use Ampere's law to uh, to calculate the magnetic field if the distribution is symmetric okay let's first have an example <clears throat> so using Ampere's law find the magnetic field of a perpendicular distance s from an infinitely long straight wire carrying a current I. so we actually have solved this in the previous lesson but we used the law of du sub r where we solved for r and the r prime and the and then the separation distance vector r hat so in this case if we use Ampere's law all we need to do is to make an Amperian loop and close our current in an Amperian loop. Our um, oh, sorry, our Amperian loop must include the point where we want to calculate our magnetic field. So it should <laughs> it's not circular. Scale so that's that's our Amperian loop. It includes the point S. And then we will use the integral form of Gauss law. So here our dl, this is our dl, and it's in the phi hat direction. And since we already know the magnetic field, so the magnetic field is actually also in in the the phi hat direction. So both b and dl here. B in this case is actually uniform. At all points equidistant, a distance S, the magnetic field is the same. It's B. And its direction is phi hat. DL and DL in this case is just DL and its direction is uh, phi hat. Sorry. Yeah, we don't need to use the RD phi version of DL here. So using Ampere's law. We have the closed integral of B dot DL is equal to mu naught I enclosed. In this case, the current enclosed is just I. So B dot DL, the product of this, phi hat dot phi hat is just 1. So you have B DL, closed integral of B DL. Since magnetic field is uniform at all uh, points with the distance S from the wire, we can take it out of the integral. <clears throat> and this closed integral of dl here this is our dl so the closed integral is the total length of this of our our amperian loop and in that case uh, our amperian loop is a circle with radius s so this is just equivalent to or equal to 2 pi s so the magnitude of our magne uh, magnetic field <coughs> is mu naught i over 2 pi s and the vector form is uh, in directed in the, the, the angle in the direction phi hat which is what we have uh, obtained using the law of bus of r but this is a much uh, shorter method again you can use similar with gauss law you can only use or it is advantageous to use ampere's law if there is symmetry in your system Cylindrical symmetry, uh, <clears throat> spherical symmetry, things like that. So as a summary, this is the result. This is the field near a long straight current carrying conductor. Which is what we have obtained uh, before. So another example 
is we are asked to find the magnetic field of an infinite sheet of uniform surface current. So you can think of this as surface charges, but the surface charges are now moving such as to create surface current. <coughs> so the mag <coughs> excuse me. So the surface current is uniform. The surface current density is uniform. It's k. Its magnitude is k. Its direction is x hat. So this is the x uh, direction. It's the y direction. The y axis is the z axis. So in order to find the magnetic field <coughs> of this, we need to make uh, a side view. A side view of our problem here. So let's look at this as at a side view. So this is now our sheet. And these are the dots that you see here are, are the surface currents. It's moving out of the plane. So this is actually the positive x-axis. This is the y-axis. This is the z-axis. So we are <coughs> doing the side, uh, viewing the sheet in a side view manner, such as the sheet will now look like a line. So we will make an Amperian loop enclosing the surface current. So our Amperian loop is a square and it will have four sections. So there are different elements here, the L1 are going upward, the L2 going here, the L3 downward, the L4 going to the right for the positive Y axis. Now, we know that uh, the direction of the magnetic field obeys the right-hand rule. If this is the direction of the current, then this is the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, since the surface current is out of the page, on the top of the, on the upper part, on the top of the sheet, the magnetic field is in this direction. And on the lower sheet, the magnetic field is in that uh, direction. So take note, this is an infinite sheet of charge. So it has no, it basically has no ends. So uh, the magnetic field at the top and at the bottom have the same magnitude, say B, but they, have, they just have, they just differ in direction. At the top, the direction is <clears throat> towards the negative Y axis. And at the bottom, the direction of the magnetic field is to the, towards the positive Y axis. So if we use uh, Ampere's law, so it's B dot DL, that product of B dot DL, then only DL2 and DL4 will contribute. DL1 and DL3, which are directed along the Z axis, will not, will not contribute. Because the direction of these two are in the Z hat. Our magnetic field is y hat. So z hat dot y hat is zero. So only only y hat dot y hat will uh, will have a non-zero value. Y hat dot y hat is one. So that one. <coughs> so when we use uh, Ampere's law, the close integral of p dot d is equal to mu naught. So the, this closed integral here will be composed of four sections, but again, only two uh, integrals will remain. Integral of uh, the B top at DL2 plus the integral of B bottom at DL4. This is equal to mu naught. Since this is surface current, so I is just uh, K dot Okay, so we have our K, KX hat, our DL, here this DL is uh, a line perpendicular to the surface current. So this is our DL here. And you can see that this DL is along the Y uh, axis. So we can actually let that one uh, to be DY uh, with dy and its direction is actually the same direction as the surface cut this d that's a dl and this is uh, the direction of that dl i'm mistaken so i think this dl is along the line of the surface current so in this case, this is the DL. So 
so it is along the x uh, axis it's its direction is also along the x axis so that's basically the x uh, x so sorry so this is the our our dl here so our dl is along the line perpendicular to the surface current but its direction is uh, along the direction of the surface uh, current so that's our dl so in that case our dl will be dy and its direction is x hat dy x hat okay so using this values b top that dl2 is just b dl2 where dl2 is uh, dy we will get b uh, dy for this term we also get b dy both evaluated from 0 to uh, y is a we evaluated from a certain length 0 to l then you will have mu naught k is k its direction is x hat the direction of dl is also x hat so you will get uh, dy also evaluated from 0 to yeah. so from here you see that the magnitude b is just equal to mu naught k over two. so similar with uh, an infinite sheet of charge where in the electric field doesn't depend on position it's actually uniform the magnetic field is also uniform since k here is uniform so for a uniform uh, sheet of surface currents the magnetic field is actually uniform but the direction at the top and bottom are, are opposite so at the top of the of the sheet you will have a magnetic field in that direction at the bottom of the sheet it's in the opposite direction but they have the same magnitude and their magnitude is constant it doesn't depend on any uh, coordinate or any position so in summary this is the magnetic field this are the magnetic field of a uniform a sheet of uniform surface current so at the top at z is equal as greater than zero so at that region the direction of the magnetic field is negative y hat at the bottom the direction of the magnetic field is y hat they both have the same magnitude mu naught k over okay so for our next example this is the field of a solenoid inside so we'll we'll just try to find the magnetic field of a very long solenoid so actually you have done this in your uh sorry why did i reveal the answer okay so for a solenoid this is a solenoid just coils of wire so we need to take the cross section of the solenoid so we cut this in half such that we see something like this so at the top the current is out of the page and at the bottom the currents are going into the page so we make an amperian loop and again uh, we assume that the direction in this region is say in that direction using right hand rule so this is the direction of the loop the current in the loop this is the direction of the, of the magnetic field so meaning only one dl will contribute this dl here so this is perpendicular be that dl of this zero be that dl of this zero this dl we can actually set this to be very very far so you say at infinity such that the magnetic field there is zero so that only this dl will, will contribute so using this uh, picture our b dot dl so mu naught uh, i enclosed so in this case it's just one dl that corresponds uh, that contributes here to this integral so you'll have b integral of dl is equal to uh, mu naught and the current enclosed is each of this current is i so how many currents are enclosed so it's number number of currents so n times i depends on the number of turns 
So DL here, integral DL here, it's the total length. Say DL. So the magnitude of the electric field, uh, sorry, magnetic field inside it will just be mu naught n i over L. Where we can actually write, write n over L as the number density, number of turns per unit uh, length. N over L. So n here is the number density, number of turns per unit length. So that the magnitude will just be mu naught n i. That one. And the direction will just be depending on what axis is this. So in this case, we actually let the axis of the solenoid as the z-axis. So it actually depends on <laughs> your definition of the axis. So this is the field inside the solenoid. It's very easy if you use Ampere's law. So this is what the cross section looks like. So this is an electromagnet. So one one part of the of the solenoid is a north pole, acts as a north pole, the other one acts as a south pole. But this magnetic field is only inside and along the axis of the solenoid. Actually, not necessarily along the axis of the solenoid, inside the core of the solenoid. It's uniform. So for our last example, sorry, this should be example number four. So for our last example, we have this. So a current I flows through, flows along a wire of radius R. Find the magnetic field in all regions. So there are, this is a cylinder. So there are only two regions, inside and outside. Inside is S is less than R. Outside S is greater than R. The radial distance is S. If A, the current is uniformly distributed over the outside surface of the wire. So in letter A, the current I is just on the surface. It's not on the volume. For letter B, the current is distributed in such a way that J is proportional to S. It's now uh, distributed along the volume. Similar with the, our previous lesson. We discussed about current densities. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's first uh, try to solve this, uh, try to solve letter A. So, I'm going to go to my board mode here. So, for letter A, the current is actually just on the surface so no it's not only true for letter a let's see yeah it's for letter a right let's draw the letter b so in order to solve for the magnetic fields inside and outside so we make amperian loops amperian loop inside amperian loop outside so the radius of our amperian loops s but for this s this is s less than r for this s this is s is greater than r okay so inside the loop there are, there's actually no current there's no current there's no current density inside the loop because all of the currents are on the surface therefore uh, the closed integral using Ampere's law it's mu naught i so but i is zero so it's zero so therefore the magnetic field is zero so there's no magnetic field uh, inside how about outside so this is for s is less than r inside the uh, cylinder for outside the current enclosed is, is the current enclosed is the total current i so that when you uh, use ampere's law the current enclosed is just i to 
this, this just becomes as usual b times the total length of the loop which is 2 pi s so you will just get mu naught i over 2 pi s and the direction of this is actually uh, phi hat this is for s is greater than r so this is for letter uh, a so when the surface current is only on the outside surface of the now for the second problem the current is now distributed within the volume such that the current density is proportional to s so this means that j is equal to some proportionality constant k times uh, s so we do the same it's now letter p but these currents are now within the volume now the key here is to solve for the uh okay let's first solve for the magnetic field outside because this is easier so outside the current enclosed is just the total current i so therefore the magnetic field is just the same as uh, the in letter a the previous case so unit i over 2 pi s s this is for sorry phi hat this is for s is greater than r or outside now for inside the current enclosed is actually just a fraction it's not the total i but say some fraction c of i it is a fraction of the total current so the total current you'll get the total current if you take the whole volume but since uh you are only taking a small part of the volume so it's just a fraction so all we need to do is to solve this fraction uh c so how do we do that so our j is proportional to s so k times s k is just some proportionality constant and we can solve for the current enclosed using the formula j dot da okay so our da here that differential area is s d s d p so this will give us the i enclosed is integral of j which is k s so i'm gonna put k outside i will s and da is s d s d p so we will have s squared d s d p so this is a surface integral so it's two integral from 0 to 2 pi but here since we are we are only uh trying to find the current enclosed s is only from 0 to s the radius of our amperian loop we're not integrating all the way to r because we are only trying to find the current enclosed by our amperian loop so it's just from zero to s so doing this i will just leave this to you this will we will get 2 pi k s cube over 3. so this is the current enclosed now the total current i happens when the total area of the loop or s is equal to r so that's 2 pi k r cube over 3 this is actually the total current when s is equal to uh, r or when you evaluate this from 0 to r you get the total current 2 pi k r cube over 3 now how do i write i enclose in terms of i so using this current enclose will just be uh, I'm gonna write this as 2 pi k r cube over 3. This is just our i. Then I'll have s cube over r cube. So I just multiplied r cube over r cube so that I can have this. And this is just the definition of i. So basically, I have i s cube over r cube. And this is the fraction that I have been looking for. So it's s cube over r cube and note that at s is equal to r suggest that this fraction becomes one and you get the total current i at s is equal to r 
So this is the fraction that I have been looking for. Okay. Knowing that, we can now proceed with our uh, Ampere's Law. So our Ampere's Law is just v dot dl is equal to mu net i enclosed and again this will just be reduced to v and then the total length which is 2 pi uh, s and then you have mu net times the current enclosed which is i s cubed over r cubed and you will get v is the magnitude as v is in mu net i s squared over 2 pi r cubed So that is the magnetic field inside. The magnetic field outside is just like this. So at S is equal to R, you will notice that the, the value of the magnetic field inside and the magnitude, the value of the magnetic field outside are the same. So it's mu naught I over 2 pi at the surface at s is equal to one so this is at for s is less than r okay so as a summary these are the answers to this uh problem so again if there is no current enclosed by your loop then there's no magnetic field so for letter a there's no magnetic field inside the uh y So, that is the end of this uh, lesson. So, we now have discussed about how to calculate the force and the magnetic field on current or of current uh, elements. So, we have discussed two ways to calculate the magnetic field, the BS of R law and the Ampere's law, which is just a consequence of the curl of a magnetic field, a magnetostatic field. Uh, for our next lesson, we will now be comparing uh, the electrostatics and magnetostatics head to head. So, electrostatics, you have electric field. Magnetostatics, you have magnetic field. Electrostatics, you have an electric potential, but we still haven't discussed any kind of magnetic analog of the electric potential yet. So, we will try to discuss that in the second discuss that in the succeeding lessons so i will see you again in the next lesson